I am Ashlyn. You've lived on the earth your entire life, but how much do you really know about this place that you call home? Here are eight facts I bet you did not know about the earth. Number eight, a day isn't 24 hours. Let's just get it out there. A day is not exactly 24 hours. It is often said that a day is defined by how long it takes for the Earth to rotate 360 degrees. But if we only use this method, in just a few months, noon would be midnight, and midnight would be noon. This is because we're not only rotating on our axis, but revolving around the sun. Also, the Earth doesn't do anything extremely circular or straight. Hey, <laughs> but rather at an angle. This makes the rotation less precise. So we can't say that each day is based on the sunrise and sunset. The day is so non-precise, in fact, that an earthquake can slow the earth down or speed it up. And the further the moon is away from the sun, the longer the days will be. <laughs> Sometimes we even add a second to the end of the year to compensate for all of these changes. If you want an average day length, we say that there are, on average, 23 hours and 56 minutes in a day. But then again, the time it takes for the sun to revolve around the Earth is 24 hours exactly. But this is with those leap seconds that humans add. Of course, we use the sun's day because why? <laughs> because if in a fight, I'd say the sun would destroy the entire galaxy before any of the planets in the solar system even had a chance to fight back. Number seven, we haven't seen the ocean. Of course, we've seen part of the ocean, but you'd be utterly shocked to hear how much has yet to have been touched. Less than 5% of the ocean has been explored by humans, 5%. Oceans are so entirely important to human life, especially when you take into consideration that more than 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by the ocean. <laughs> Oceans are so entirely important to human life. Yes, they are. For starters, they produce more than half of the oxygen in the atmosphere and absorb the most carbon. The air, the water, and the food we live off of all have the ocean to thank. The ocean is the only way that our ancestors could travel, the only reason we have nearly every amenity we own today. So how is it that 95% of this all important ocean has never even been explored? Going thousands of feet underwater is no easy or safe task. It requires extensive equipment, tons of money, trained and risky divers, and multiple governmental permissions. As for dangers, high water pressure is one of the greatest threats at deep depths. Along with who knows what unknown creatures lurk below at any minute, the smallest malfunction in equipment could result in a sudden death. It is also unknown exactly how cold or how high the water temperature is in many areas. Divers could boil or freeze to death in a matter of seconds. Plus, do you know how dark it is under there? Ooh, darker than you will ever see a night on Earth. So as you can see, even with today's technology, exploring the ocean is a very extremely dangerous mission. Number six, it isn't round. Back in Christopher Columbus's day, he had to prove that the Earth was round. But what if I told you that it wasn't? that it isn't. But <laughs> then again, it is far from flat. It is known that when shrunk down to the size of a billiard ball, the earth would be smoother than that billiard ball. However, when this is done, the earth would not be able to roll like a billiard ball does. The first person to suggest that the earth is not perfectly round was Isaac Newton. He said it was more of an oblate spheroid, a squashed version of a sphere with bulging poles. So the distance from Earth's center to sea level is more than 10 miles greater than the distance from the center to the equator. One geologist said that the Earth has a bit of plasticity that allows the shape to deform very slightly. The effect would be similar to spinning a bit of silly putty. Although, 
Earth's plasticity is much, much less than that of the silicone plastic clay so familiar to children. One more thing. The Earth's shape changes over time as well. Shifts, earthquakes, and all kinds of natural disasters disrupt the Earth's form. Even meteors can make craters that ultimately shift the Earth. Number five, trip through the center. What would happen if you dug a hole through the center of the Earth? Well, let's start with gravity. <laughs> on Earth, gravity keeps our feet on the ground, but near the center of the Earth, our weight would be zero. Yeah, ladies, zero. This would cause us to fly through the center. If you jump down the hole, it would take you about 42 minutes to reach the other side. That is, if you were invincible, yes. But even then, if you didn't hold on to anything on the other side, you would be pulled back under and continue your never ending journey of going back and forth and back and forth through the earth. At one point during your trip, you would be going 15,000 miles per hour passing the center. But of course, none of this could happen because not only would you be burned alive, but as soon as you reach a certain point when digging your hole, the Earth's core would burn the hole closed. If the hole were magically drilled, in milliseconds, it would be welded shut again with the temperatures of 10,000 degrees. So in short, you cannot dig a hole through the center of the Earth. However, if some sci-fi device allows it, it wouldn't be recommended as you would disintegrate at thousands of miles an hour as you went on your endless journey. Well, maybe not endless, because remember, you would die in about 15 minutes. Morbid. The deepest hole in the world is located in Russia, known as Kola Super Deep Borehole, and is now over 40,000 feet. Considering the Earth is over 20 million feet thick, <laughs> they still have quite a long way to go. Number four, wildlife is declining. You've heard of endangered species, but did you know that the entire animal kingdom is rapidly declining? Since 1970, the global wildlife population has dropped 58%. This is mostly due to humans, wildlife trade, poaching, and pollution contributed largely, especially in the sea as the population of sea creatures has dropped 80% since 1970. Though humans are the main cause, climate changes have also played a role. It is believed that vertebrate population is falling a steady 2% each year. The craziest part is that humans are doing nothing about it. <laughs> this isn't a natural extinction. This is humans killing off the wildlife for nothing more than money and convenience. What's even scarier to imagine is what would happen to humans if all wildlife disappeared. Animals, plants, and microorganisms are necessary for there to be balance on Earth. The extinction of even one animal has the ability to turn the world completely upside down. Germination, seed dispersal, pollination, predation, waste breakdown, Habitat maintenance and pest control are only a few reasons that wildlife are absolutely crucial for human survival. This will not just take away our meat, but our vegetation as well, which relies on the natural cycle of flora and fauna to flourish. If we don't have any vegetation, not only are we at a loss when it comes to food, but the oxygen would be zapped from the air and we would all suffocate. A bit morbid, but the truth. Number three, humans cannot stand still. Has anyone ever told you to sit still? Well, the truth is, you can't. <laughs> Take that, Miss Brzezinski. Yeah, as long as the Earth is rotating, humans will not be able to stand perfectly still for even one second. But even if you're being less literal and speaking of your body relative to the Earth, it is still impossible as all atoms and molecules in your body will contain kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy in each cell that it possesses due to its motion. It is defined as the work needed to accelerate a body of a given mass from rest to its stated velocity. When you no longer have kinetic energy, you are long gone. 
When you die, the physical energy that was in your body is repurposed. It is released into the world as matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed. Besides that, your heart is always beating. Your digestive tract is always working. Your blood is always running and your brain is always active. Even if paralyzed with the inability to shake in the most minuscule way, your body will be moving in more ways than you could even imagine. <laughs> so think about that the next time you stop to take a breather. And I guarantee you will feel the energy in your body as it works to keep you alive and well. Number two, Canada has less gravity. You would assume that everywhere on Earth had the same amount of gravity, but that is not so. There is one area on this planet that has lower gravity than everywhere else. Since the 1960s, scientists have been trying to figure out this mystery. The mystery as to why the Hudson Bay and the surrounding areas have less gravity than the other parts of the world. So mysterious. Gravity is the force that attracts a body towards the center of the Earth or toward any other physical body having mass. Gravity is what makes the planets orbit the stars and what makes the stars clump together in huge, swirling galaxies. Newton discovered the laws of gravity, and Einstein, he tweaked them. But what neither of them considered was that the gravity on Earth was not equal throughout. One theory suggests that the mantle, which contains magma, is constantly moving up and down, twirling around, it drags the Earth's continental plates down. This would suggest that the mass near the Hudson Bay is larger, meaning the gravity would be lower. Another involved an ice sheet that left a deep indention on the Earth, which contributed to this as well. When topographic maps were created of the area, it was noticed that two bulging points were located on the western and eastern sides of the Hudson Bay. This is where the gravity is at its lowest. Number one, the ocean is rich. Humans have found all sorts of treasures in the ocean, but most of them were left behind or lost by other humans long ago. But there is still gold in the ocean. How much, you ask? At least 20 million tons. If this gold were 18 carats, it would be worth over $500 trillion. That is worth more than five times the net worth of the entire United States of America. So why hasn't it been gathered? Hmm? To put an end to national debt? Fantastic question. Because gold in the ocean is so dilute and thin that it would be nearly impossible to gather it. Each liter of water contains less than a 13 billionth of a gram. If the ocean contains that much gold in such a concentrated form, it only goes to show you how large it is. One day, it is possible that we will find a way to mine it. But until then, we just have to live with the fact that the ocean has more gold than multiple countries put together. Thanks for watching. Any other cool facts that you know about the Earth? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe. I'll see you next time on Peachy Planet.